around the room, what potential do you see? What if we were to pool our skills, our resources, our ideas, and our networks? Could we build a better Birmingham? This was a question I asked myself three years ago. I was a young-ish creative entrepreneur wanting to make a change in my city. This is a city that's grown me and nurtured me even when I wanted to turn my back on it. This is a city that shaped my voice. Quite literally, I couldn't get rid of this accent if I tried. <laughs> it shaped my voice, my values, my enterprising spirit, and it's fed my thirst for culture and art. And I wanted to be more and do more for it and with it, and I wondered if others felt the same. And at the same time, I was frustrated with the dissonance of the, between the institutions that pillared the city and the kind of young person that I resonated with. So I wondered, what would happen if I brought some young people into a poetry shop, into a coffee shop, after hours to share a bit of poetry? What would we talk about? What would our words reflect? Would anyone even come? And they did come. And what I thought was just a cool little poetry jam was actually the start of a movement of people that would soon outgrow that coffee shop. I had built a thing. And I remember stood there with my hair stood on end, surrounded by strangers who would later become my best friends. As I listened to poetry about love and mermaids and loving mermaids, but also the colonial legacy in our institutions, the faults in our hierarchical leadership, and the seismic failing of our systems from voting to education to welfare to truly engage and embrace everyone. And I remember thinking, wow. These people are articulating things better than our politicians spend years in training to do. This artivism, this art activism, this art for change is taking of creativity and spoken word and poetry and taking a big complex idea and breaking it down into something simple that might just strike an emotional response, might just lead to a behavior change in someone. And if we can change enough behaviors in enough people, then we're changing culture. And if we can change culture, then we're changing society. And that felt liberating and powerful. And it was having a catalytic effect. The more that the young person felt safe in the space, the more that the institution said, hey, what's going on over here then? We were pooling our credibility into a shared pot, and a type of collective legitimacy was emerging that we could all take from. We'd built a bridge between the us and the them. We'd built trust with both sides. Fast forward three years later, we're now Beat Freaks, a youth engagement agency working with over 3,000 young people a year and getting to travel internationally with our work. And people kept saying to me, well, you've got the credibility, you've got the clients, you've got this bunch of artivists, just keep doing what you're doing, right? I became acutely aware of the Western ideal of success. Grow, grow, grow until you've swollen so big you take up the most space. That is success. But this didn't sit right with me. Don't get me wrong, I'm fiercely ambitious and I'm proud of it. But I wanted to grow something that would grow from me, grow with me, and most importantly, would outgrow me. I wanted to work in a networked way that would allow for fluidity and agency of those involved to go and create for my creations. I wanted to build the thing that would build more things. And I went back to that poetry jam, and it was the same goosebumps, but now different strangers. And I asked myself, what more can we do here? How can I help these people to help more people? All of these little networks were spinning out of Beat Freaks and going off and doing their own thing. We had the art, we had the people power, and we'd recognize the faults in the system. But how could we translate all of that into change? How could we make more space to make change at a systemic level? I knew that understanding the bigger picture was key, but unfortunately, systems are still designed and communicated in a way that isolates the masses. So I became curious in the role of data. How could data help us to unlock and understand how things worked? And at the same time, I was reflecting on all of these great principles and learnings and approaches that we'd taken from Beat Freaks. And I asked, could we bring them together? Could we take data back into the hands of the people and would art, could art be a tool to get us there? Could Beat Freaks build more space to build a new thing that could get us to look at this while protecting what we'd already created? And it turns out, yeah, we can. So we set up a do and think tank called Doink. And I'd had all this experience of bringing lots of different artists together to collaborate, and I love that. But I had a hypothesis. If we were to extend this to a wider interdisciplinary team and make space for more people, well, maybe we'd have greater access to different perspectives. They say that great minds think alike. But I wonder if it's the minds that don't think alike that together come out with the greatest ideas. 
So I convened a group of data journalists, some makers, some designers, and some artists, and we looked at arguably the biggest political decision of our generation, the EU referendum. We wanted to engage young people in a brand new way, so we came up with a data rave. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. We took complex, boring, confusing jargon, and we broke it down into beautiful, simple things that people could understand. And at the same time, we used artistic interventions to capture insight from young people, to allow their voices to be heard. We showed them how the thing worked, how they could change it, and why they were instrumental in that, true participatory democracy. And this kind of social alchemy, this taking of something hard and industrious and taking it through a process of softening into understanding and therefore action is a model that I believe everybody can benefit from, not just those working within this context. And for us, it won't end with data. If we're going to break this system better, we're going to have to build and make space, build and make space, build and make space. This is a kind of energy and intention that goes beyond the ego, beyond the heroic entrepreneur or the business model. It's expansive, and it allows for a breadth and depth for us to take our talents, point them at something meaningful, and invest in solutions that will outgrow us. How might you take the hard and the soft, the data and the art, the big picture and the nuance, the people and the systems, and find innovation in the tension between the two? Who and what can you make more space for? Build the thing. Go out, try it, test it, play with it, tinker with it, break it, put it back together. Ask yourself, what is the best that can happen? Build the thing that builds more things. Be generous in your learnings, open your social capital and let go. Empower others to create from your creations. Take the power of the things that you know, apply them to the things that you don't, and do it with people who know more than you. Look around the room. What potential do you see? Thank you very much.